Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another coding session with Sander. And today we're going to look at all the changes that I've made since our last video. I've made a couple of changes to fix some bugs, some errors, make things a little bit more streamlined. And that's the general gist of this today's video. And of course, all the messages that I added since our previous snack bar video. So with that being said, that's what we're going to be talking about today. In the next couple of videos, you're going to get things like symphony forms, uh, changing an entity, like manually doing that and pushing that through migrations, uh, all that sort of cool stuff we're going to look at. In a future video, we will add a description to our to do's. But anyway, let's get started. So. Uh, I've made a couple of changes and I'm comparing my changes from my local to what I used to have. And I can do that by going into here into version control, log on head or log, any of these two will do. And then I can go and look at the previous one that we did, which is added a message snack bar, right click on it and I can say compare with local. And now I can see all the differences between them. So. First of all, what did I change? Well, let's go to our messages first in the controller. So I've gone back from using an array to get like lines uh, printed out. I mean, I've showed you that, but to make things more simple, I have returned back to using just a string. So an array with a string and a level. Okay. So we have text here. So, so this is what it used to be. Okay. So we had an array text and then inside there an array with multiple lines which I mean, if you want to do multiple lines, I mean, that's the way to do it. If you don't want to have any problems with uh, cross site scripting using dangerously render HTML, which uh, it's a cool function, but it's dangerous. You are vulnerable to uh, cross site scripting. So that's why it's called dangerous. So if you are scared of that sort of stuff, then you want to use something like going through an array and render each line differently. And then of course the level as well, which in cases of error is set to error and in cases of success, it's set to success. Those are the two levels. You could also introduce the third level, of course, and just add that to the switch, uh, which we discussed in the last video. But yeah, this is the messages that I got. So uh, could not reach database when attempting to create a to do, and then a to do has been created if it was successful. So this is if it fails. This is if it's successful, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this properly. So here you can see the message text to do has been created level success. And here could not reach database when attempting to create a to do level error. Okay. Uh, and then we have another message right here. So this is if the update goes wrong. So we say could not reach database when attempting to update it to do level error, uh, text to do successfully updated and level success. And then finally, we have another message here, which is going to be uh, could not reach database attempting to delete it to do level error and to do is successfully being created. Now, some would argue that flushing and removing stuff, putting a try catch around there is not that great of a big or big of a, an issue really, because if something goes wrong with flush or if something goes wrong with remove, something big has gone wrong and simply having that message pop up is not going to be enough. But uh, I'm sure that there is a way to get like some global message or something of what what's actually going on. I still have to do some research in that. But for basic functionality, for basic app, this will suffice. So those are the messages. Now, what did I change in the context? Quite a bit, because of course we have to handle all those messages. So uh, we've already dealt with the create to do, but here in update to do, I've moved around some lines. So I put an if statement here with an if and an else, if an error exists, then set the state for the message alone. If it's not, then, you know, just go through the normal procedure of copying the state, changing the state, pushing the state, setting the message. Okay. Uh, same goes here for delete. You check for if there is a level error, if there is not, and you continue with normal procedure and delete the index of that to do very simple. Uh, you could alternatively, you know, if you wish, put also a try catch around getting the data, like getting the restful data off of the read to do, you could do a level error there as well. If you want to, uh, I'm not going to because read usually goes very well. And if it doesn't, then well, the app is pretty much broken and you can't use it. Plus people will go like, where's all my data or they can't push it or, any, or anything or anything else could happen really. But yeah, reading is not that much of a problem. Then let's go to our delete dialogue because there was a little bug in here. So 
uh, I had to lock the props. I can actually remove that now. I don't need that anymore. So the thing was, there was a slight problem that I had with the props. I set up the props with an equal here. So I said prop types dot shape equals and then a function. No, shape itself is the function. So remove that equals and then you can put it in right here. And then of course you can also set the is required behind it. So in this case, uh, with this function, for example, is required. I can add that to that. Uh, and then this one's as, these ones as well uh, have a to do prop type shape, which has a ID, which is prop types numbers is required and a name, which is also required. Otherwise it cannot render the delete uh, confirmation. So these props are required. Otherwise it won't work. Uh, and then of course this boolean also is required. Uh, I don't know why I removed those, but there we go, it's back. So that's really what I changed. The equal sign was the problem here and it created a couple of errors in the console. If you were to like update something right now, you'll actually see it in the console popping up. It's quite an annoying error, but doing this simple little thing fixed it. With that being said, let's go to our app snack bar. Let's see what I changed here. Okay, so in, because we are using just text messages now and we're not using a array of text messages or whatever, I have changed the entire array function back to context.message.text. So instead of that, instead of context.message.text.map and then mapping through them and putting spans and breaks on them, uh, and now, now it's just context.message.text. It's really simple, uh, looks a lot cleaner. So there you go, that's that. And then finally, the to-do table. So what I changed here is actually quite a bit. So what I've done here, if I zoom in a bit, uh, I have separated a create submit and the on edit submit. Okay, so on create submit, on edit submit. What this is basically meaning, it basically is for, is for when you submit the forms to edit or create. Okay, so when you create a to do and when you uh, edit it to do. Uh, now it actually responds properly to enters and it has proper forms around it. So it actually properly works. Uh, so now we are just calling these functions inside here. So instead of having that gigantic, like if you look at the right here, I had a gigantic on change with a arrow function inside here and it still needed to add, I still need to add some extra functionality like uh, e dot prevent default because normally if you update it, you press enter, you refresh the page. If you change, if you put an e dot prevent or events dot prevent default on there, it will not refresh the page when a form is submitted. So that's very important. So we're just calling this function now instead of using the entire arrow function, which was kind of annoying. So that functions properly now. Looks like I also missed a uh, on click on the icon button of the add icon. Uh, that works now properly as well. Uh, and the form has moved as well. So the form is now, uh, let's see, I think I don't even have a form on here anymore. No, I do still have the form. Uh, the form is surrounded on, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, looking on the right here. So yes, I did move the form. So the form is now inside the entire table cell uh, and you can submit it as well right here. Normally what you would do is you would move it like so, put it around the entire table cell. Unfortunately, you cannot do that. That You cannot put, like a form cannot be a child of a table row. A table rows child needs to be a TD or a table cell in this case. You cannot put the form around it. So we move the form back here in that cell. And then we just call the function again here separately on the icon button. What I did in the previous one is I just made that a submit button. And normally when you hit submit, it submits to the database. You know, it just submits the on submit. It triggers the forms on submit. That's what it does. Um, but with the form surrounding the entire table, the problem was that if I were to like do a on submit for my update, my update would trigger my create to do. So that's not good. So now we've uh, moved away from that and we are using separate functions right here that we can easily see and manage. And then we only have to call them right here. So it's easier to manage, easier to read and easier to see where it all goes down. And then of course, and, and then for the edit one here as well. So we put a form around it here at the edit is shown. And when we compare it to the ID, we render the form right here and we do an on submit and then a dot binds. So because we need to give it a parameter being the to do ID right here, we need to use bind because if I were to just give the to do ID straight to the on edit submit, it will not have access to the event. So in order to give it the access of the event, of that form on submit, 
we need to start using dot bind so we actually know that this function is going to refer to this particular element this form so with dot bind we put in this that's standard so we actually refer to this okay so this particular element this form and then the to do id as an extra parameter so the first parameter is now going to be the event and the second one is going to be the id if i were to just remove the bind and just straight up call the to do id then that will just be the uh, the to do id it won't have an event anymore so we solve that by using bind okay now, next up, let's see, put an autofocus here on the text field. I changed the types of the text field uh, to text just to like make it readable that what you're seeing here is a text field and not some other kind of field. So I changed those types to text and lay an autofocus on the uh, edit uh, field so that whenever you click on the edit button, then it automatically focuses on that text and you can inst instantly start editing. So that's pretty cool. And then of course, for the icon button here for the edit as well, on uh, submit dot bind this and then to do ID, very simple type still submit. And that's because it's still within the form so we can actually get away with it. Like I actually don't even need to use this a second time. I could actually do without the on click now because it's inside of a form. But you know what, I'm just gonna keep it on there, why not? Actually, that's just completely useless. Let's just let's just do that, okay? So we just have a type submit, should still work. Let's take a look. So this is for the done icon for when we update. Okay, so let's update. And there we go, it still works perfectly fine. Anything in the errors? No, nothing. And that's because submit already triggers this form on submit. Um, so yeah, you can actually avoid writing some code that way. So that are all the changes that I made. A little bit of a long video, but yeah, this is all the changes that I made. It's to fix the bugs. It's to like help all the errors and all that sort of stuff. And it makes it generally a lot more stable, easier to read. And yeah, you have all those messages now. So it looks something like this now. So let's go and take a look. So when we delete something, okay, delete, we get a to-do has successfully been deleted and it's in green, bright green. Okay, we can update this. So to do one, update to do has been successfully updated okay cool and new to do two uh let me go and i can press enter now as well i don't need to actually use these buttons i can just press enter and then we go the to do has been created and then uh for the update as well we could just use enter now so that's pretty cool it's very functional it's super fast and easy to use and uh, that is the current state of the to do app so next up, we're going to be looking at Symfony Forms. Uh, we're going to be looking at changing an entity, adding an extra column, probably. We're going to go for name description now instead of just a name or a task or whatever. We're going to make it a little bit cooler, let's say. Add some extra layers. Oh, and don't forget, and I never mentioned this, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, check out my Twitter and Instagram, especially Twitter. I need friends on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.